points. The officials for today's contest are Mr. Don Quinn, Mr. George Dyer, and Mr. Tom Lacey. And now for our starting lineups, first the visiting team on the scoreboard, Adrian Waddington, Yellow Jackets. At guard, Bill Chase, Calvin Castine here, beautiful downtown Plattsburgh State at the Fieldhouse. Championship basketball, well, New York State playoff anyways, between a couple of champions. The Section 10 champion, the Madrid Waddington Yellow Jackets, facing off against the Northern Adirondack Bobcats here in this quarterfinal game. Yes, quarterfinal game of New York State 2016 playoffs. The Yellow Jackets are the number one seed out of Section 10. We got a double dribble call. Quarter final, but the section it's the regional final. Quarter final, regional final. And it's Northern Adirondack's second trip uh, to the regional final. Looking to make their second trip to the final four. Last year's team made it all the way to the final game. And lost to Cooperstown, who I believe is still in the, the hunt to defend their title. At least they were yesterday. We talked to Steve Chilton Jr. Bobcats come out with Daniel Burrell, number five, Paige Chilton, number 31, Taylor Dernan, number 10, shot clock. Nope, and we get a tie up. Daniel Burrell doing a nice job of tying up the Yellow Jacket player there, and the Bobcats will retain possession. Also, uh, Juliana Gardner is out there for the Cats, and Avery Lambert. Gardner's number 12, and Lambert's number 23. Starting lineup for the the 18 and 6 Yellow Jackets is Daniel Hoff, number one. Nice shot put up by the Bobcats, doesn't go. Rebounded by the Yellow Jackets. Olivia Palmeter is number 11. Marcellus, Hannah Marcellus is number 21. Kelsey Tiernan, we got a travel called on uh, one of the other starters, Morgan Burns, that's number 33. Kelsey Tiernan is number 23. And Marcellus is number 21. Bobcats are coached by the head coach is Mr. Chris Brooks and Courtney Brown. Uh, Courtney Brown. Why did I say Brown? <laughs> Brown. <laughs> Brown. Brown. That passes inside to Juliana Gardner. And it's off the leg. No. 
Thought it went off the one of the Yellow Jackets legs. NAC, three time uh, Section 7 champ. They defended their two time title, beating Seton by a score of 50 to 46. That was last weekend right here at this field house at Plattsburgh State. The year before that, they prevailed over uh, uh, Sable. And there's a there's a push. Or could have been, wouldn't have been surprised the travel's called. Officials are Mr. Lacey, Mr. Quinn, and Mr. Dyer. Blocked by Chilton. No score yet. 6.04 on the clock. That's twice in a row she's done that, Bill. Two blocks by Chilton. Yep. And I missed the first one. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Saturday afternoon basketball here. We're all the way into March. The month of green. Happy St. Patrick's Day. March 17th coming up. Also Easter will be on the 27th of this month. Taylor Dernan calling for the ball. She's got two defenders to beat. She gets around one. Drives. Doesn't score. Still no score here. Neither team has found the bottom of the net as of yet. Chilton with the steal. Drives. Left-handed. But can't convert. And rebound pulled down by Marcellus. It's quickly up to Burn or Morgan uh, Burns. Yes, Burns. That's way over the top of everything. And Chilton is there for the Cats. Madrid Waddington, they uh, uh, beat the two-time defending champ St. Lawrence Larry's to win the title this year for Class C Section 10. And that was, they won by a better than 20 points. It was 50 something to 28. They won their semifinal game uh, over, uh, I think it was Norwood Norfolk. And that was a score also of like 52 to 18. And they were able to advance to this game by winning over Saratoga Catholic, I think it was. I'm not quite sure who their opponent was, but they... And they won in overtime there. That game was played earlier this week on Wednesday. And once again, the winner of this contest will advance to the final four. We played Joe in two minutes and three minutes and 15 seconds, and neither team has yet to sink a basket. We're still at 0 0. Dernan sees that loose ball. She's going to pick it up. She's going to lay it up and not convert. Taylor Dernan on a breakaway. That's that uh, unfriendly rim to our left. I think it was the same way last week. That wasn't the rim on that one, Mel. You just went too hard. <laughs> just a little bit too fast there that time, Taylor. I think this would be a shooting foul right here, but it's not. Yeah, I think you're right, too. Non-shooting foul was called. Down low to Gardner. It was deflected before it got to the hands of Juliana. And we got a tie-up. That was Palmer getting her hand in there. Possession arrows. Favorite of Bombcats again? Okay. Well, it was a foul. That's why we had a ball. Thirty-three blue hold. Fouls on Morgan Burns. Four twenty-six here on the clock. Championship basketball at Hometown Cable. Wild Bill Chase, Calvin Castai. On the inbound play, Taylor Dernan gets the Bobcats off in the scoring department. Pass from Burrow to Dernan, cutting to the hoop, and a nice play on that inbound play. Well, it's 2 nothing. NAC on top. NAC looking to make their return trip to the Final Four. The second year in a row. Dernan, and that steal from Chilton. Dernan gets the pass. No, no foul called. Somebody from Madrid, I think, thinking there should have been a travel. Juliana Gardner scores. Picking up the loose ball, putting it up and in, and it's 4 0 NAC. Passes down to Huff. Huff, left handed shot, rattles around and out. And Chilton has been a force on the defensive end so far. Bolton stealing the ball, grabbing rebounds, blocking shots. 
23-22 and counting left in this quarter. Gardner trying to drive through three Yellow Jackets. The ball as she gets tied up. Jump ball called. Possession arrow in favor of Madrid Waddington. Madrid Waddington. That's where it's located what? Out between uh, Messina and Augsburg, right? Yep. Somewhere. Oh, somewhere out that way. Somewhere out there. Off in Route 37, I think. Well, you know, just don't you go out and see the Bishop, Terry LaValle. <laughs> Neither team has gone to the bench yet. Dernan almost had another steal. Can't go see the Bishop, he's almost on the road. <laughs> yeah, he's never in Augsburg, right? <laughs> 4-0 is the score. Three minutes exactly left here in the first quarter. Commoner. Kick it back out to Tiernan. Tiernan. Off balance. Shot clock violation. NAC playing some stellar defense so far. 2.45 on a clock. And yet to allow the Yellow Jackets to score. Bobcats, Division II champions during the regular season with a 13 and 2 record. Chilton takes it hard to the hoop. Some contact made. Stolen away by Lambert. Bounce pass into Gardner. And Gardner converts off the glass and in. Nice play by Avery Lambert. 6-0 is the score. Huh. That's blocked by Taylor Dernan. And defensively, the Bobcats come out here on fire. Dernan with a block. Paige Shelton with two blocks. Tiernan to Burns. Oh, a lot of ball there. And foul called. They called it from behind the play. The record front didn't see it. First team foul on the Bobcats. They look to go down low. That was Palmer down low. 31 white. That's Chilton's first foul. Gets called for a hold. On the bounce pass. On the inbound play, ends up in the hands of Avery Lambert. She's double team. Juliana Gardner comes back to help her. This is to Lambert. Lambert finds Chilton. Ten seconds. It was ten seconds, but the ball was in flight. I don't. The ball was crossing the midcourt line when the, the shot clock went to the twenty seconds. I don't understand that call. 19 right now, but yeah. Don't they got to change it? Oh, they did now. Yeah. <laughs> Madrid Waddington. This is help with the ball. Down in the right-hand corner. She drives to the middle. Blocked again. Baylor, or no, Paige Chilton. And we got a timeout called by the Bobcats. 134 on the clock here in the first quarter. Bobcats up by six. It's a score of six to nothing over the Yellow Jackets on Hometown Cable Championship Basketball. Defensively, the Bobcats coming out. Very strong. Actually, the Yellow Jackets too. Cats have only scored six points. They've got a six to nothing lead. Saturday afternoon here, March uh, 5th, 2016, regional final game. we got a block called. Madrid Waddington people aren't going to like that. They're going to say she traveled. <laughs> On the floor. I'm not sure that call either. <laughs> oh, you, you, got, you, got, you got my cord, your cord underneath the, the leg of the... Tripod. Chilton drives to the hoop. Off the glass. Doesn't go. Loose ball. NAC ends up with it. Taylor Dernan from 
Avery Lambert, Juliana Gardner. That's the second, second or third time we've seen her like she's looking to grab the ball but move before she has it. And it slips through her hands, turned back over. Holzmer in the game, number three for uh, Madrid. Cutting to the baseline with number 21, Marcellus. And she got that pass. I believe it was from Tiernan. So then puts uh, Yellow Jackets on the board. It's a 6-2 ball game, 30 seconds left here in the first quarter. Huff. Sydney Hosmer. Over to Marcellus. Marcellus running jump shot. Doesn't go. Loose ball down underneath. Merle is there. And she was surrounded by three Yellow Jackets and then one of them grabs her and a foul is called. 16.2 seconds on the clock. Have you ever been surrounded by Yellow Jackets, Bill? Oh yeah. <laughs> I think one stung her, yeah, and I've been stung by a yellow jacket too. It's not a pleasant. Well, that pass is over the head of Avery Lambert from Taylor Dernan. Dernan looking to steal it away, but she's out of bounds with her feet when she was trying to retrieve the ball. So, six to two ball game in the bottom of the third inning here. <laughs> Low scoring affair. Pretty much like that first game in the Class D uh, regional final. Huff, long three-pointer attempt. And falls short. But the Bobcats have a four-point lead after one complete quarter of this regional final on hometown cable over the Yellow Jackets. The score is 6-2 to two, NAC over Madrid Wannington. Okay, Yellow Jackets with possession to start off this second quarter of this regional final game here on Hometown Gable. Wild Bill Chase, Calvin Castine, we're at the Fieldhouse of Plattsburgh State, beautiful downtown Plattsburgh, New York. March 5th, Saturday afternoon basketball. Started about one, oh, Taylor Dern, she can't steal that away. Commoner maintains control. Goes to Huff in the corner, she kicks it back out to Hosmer on top. Hosmer moving to her right, her bounce pass to Tiernan. No, that's Marcellus. Marcellus is number 21. Snaps the net, and it's a two-point game. Six to four is the score. That's right, folks. Six to four is the score. We're in the second quarter. Avery Lambert. Juliana Garner. She has four of the Bobcats. Six points. Taylor Dernan with the other two points. No scoring affair thus far. Winner of this contest will advance to the final four. We uh, played probably at Hudson Valley Community College. There's a three-pointer for Pometer. Now the Yellow Jackets have their first point lead up seven to six over the Bobcats. So they come out and rattle off five straight points to start off the second quarter within the first minute and 10 seconds. They only got two in the first eight minutes of the game. Gardner, her shot, does it go? Marcellus pulls down the rebound. The number one seed out of section 10 against the number one seed out of section seven. Bobcats got a buy into this game. Madrid Waddington had to play Wednesday. They won in overtime. Driving the baseline. An offensive foul called on Olivia Pometer. 6-12 on a clock. That's the second on Palmeter. Morgan Burns returns. Palmeter is out. Emily Perrier has come into contest for the Bobcats. Juliana Gardner getting a breather on the bench. Palmeter with two fouls. She's a... Uh, one of the senior leaders of the Yellow Jacket team. The Yellow Jackets come here with what, 17, 18 ball players. It looks like, I believe, uh, the varsity coach called up the whole JV team. Taylor Dernan. Merle. Emily Perrier puts up the shot. Doesn't go. Rebounded by Chilton. It appeared that Marcellus had the inside possession, but 
Rebound came out into the hands of Chilton. Dernan kicks it to Lambert. Lambert, it's called for a travel. 7-6 is the score. Lambert contesting that inbound play. Chilton gets a hand in in there before Marcellus can grab it. Okay, now the Bobcats back on the attack on that turnover. Courier losing it. Goes out of bounds and Madrid Waddington gets the ball back. Defensively, both teams uh, raising havoc <laughs> with each other. Very tight contest out there so far. About five minutes and 10 seconds left in the half and it's only a seven to six game. Pitcher's duel. Pitcher's duel. <laughs> Hosmer gets a shot off. Dernan, I'm able to pull down this rebound. Number 33 blue, I think it is. Yep, yeah. Morgan Burns. Morgan Burns picking up her second foul. And Tiernan returns in front of the scorer's table. She'll come back in. Burrow going up left-handed. And they say the Bobcats turn that over on a travel. Butterflies, I think still both teams having, trying to get their, get comfortable out there. And we got a timeout called. 4.36 on the clock. The Yellow Jackets have scored all five points in this quarter and they have a seven to six lead over the Bobcats here on Hometown Cable. Okay. Remember it's a poor offense, a good defense, or maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> Tiernan moves around Dernan. Dernan now. Forcing the ball out of bounds. I'm gonna say it was off in Taylor. 421 on the clock. NAC crowd, similar to last week when uh, sort of sat through the game and without much participation. Being kind of quiet here. NAC, the home team, Plattsburgh State. It's out of bounds. That was out of the hands of Marcellus. NAC will get the ball back, 4-10 on the clock. Down by one, seven to six. They've yet to score a point here in this second quarter. Burrow brings it down the right side. She hands off to Chilton, but that was down low and Chilton not able to handle it. Tom Lacey says a, calls a jump ball. Not sure who that ball went out of bounds on. And possession arrow gives it back to the Bobcats. Chilton. Burrow. Burrow drives to the hoop. And scores. Nice play by Danielle Burrow. Going to her left. Hurry, getting a hand in there. Avery Lambert helping out. Dernan able to hang on, but Dernan steps in front of that pass to Huff. Taylor Dernan down the right side, a little stutter step. Dernan driving, and then a block foul call. And Madrid Waddington man's not happy with that call. So looking at over there across the way, one guy pointing down to about the offensive foul call earlier on their team. He just told him, get it right. <laughs> Taylor Dernan. Uh, the foul shots are going to be big in this game. Third team foul on uh, Madrid Waddington here in this second quarter. And as you know, in high school girls basketball, after five fouls, or when they get the fifth foul, 
Start shooting foul shots. Chilton gonna get. Woo. I could have swore she traveled first. Obviously not though. Gilman, number 15, Cameron Chester. Cameron Chester, number 15, is in the game. Her first. She's got some height to her. And Daniel Burrell's gonna go to the line to shoot the one and one. Fouls on. Oh, it's two. Shoot two, All right? There's no one and one anymore in girls varsity basketball. At the high school level in New York State anyways. 3.22 on the clock, cats up by one. Gotta make the foul shots. Very important. Neither team able to make any kind of a run here. Cats are up six to two at one time, and it's now nine to seven. Bobcats. That's over the hands of Huff. Taylor Dernan there, contesting that pass from Tiernan, forcing Tiernan to throw it over the outstretched arms of. Uh, her teammate, Daniel Huff. Burrell to Lambert. Gives it back to Dania Burrell. About three minutes left in the first half. It's a nine to seven ball game. Emily Perrier driving to her right. Perrier finds a lane. That's partially blocked. Paige Shilton trying to hustle to help out and retain possession for the Bobcats, but I think she stepped out of bounds with the ball in her hand. There's another pass from Tiernan. That's over the outstretched arms of uh, Chester. Canron. Neither team being real comfortable yet offensively. <laughs> Burl, she can't convert. Perrier's underneath, grabs the rebound, puts it back up. Scramble, ball bounces backwards. And now there's Huff with it. Huff left-handed. Dishes to Tiernan. Tiernan gives to Hosmer. Down low to Chester. She spins, kicks it back out for Marcellus. Marcellus has hit a couple big baskets here. It's a 9-9 ball game. About two minutes and 10 seconds left in the first half. Well, he ain't gonna have many stats to grab one. Go over to the scorer's table during halftime. <laughs> Probably won't be too many score, too many players in double figures now. No. I think Juliana Gardner's got four points, leads the Bobcats. Matt Marcellus, I think, has four points and leads the Yellow Jackets. Paige Chilton on the line. She'll two, shoot two foul shots, 2.03 on the clock. Chilton. Cats are having an opportunity maybe to build on their lead, well, to build up a lead. Their foul shooting, I think they're one of uh, <laughs> five maybe. And don't convert on that one either. Tiernan that time gets it over Durden. Marcellus loses the ball. Durden knocks it out of bounds. Jackets on the attack. Tiernan with another pass inadvertently. Well, no look and Holzmer not ready for it. Goes out of bounds. Cats with possession. Later stages of the first half. It's a nine to nine is the score. Lambert, three pointer. Doesn't go. Crashing the boards was Emily Perrier. Couldn't grab that rebound. Ball goes out of bounds. You know, if it was 9-9 toward the end of the first quarter, you'd say it's a low-scoring game, though. <laughs> Here it is halftime. Yep, 9-9. Extremely low-scoring game now. Full court press. Shelton gets her hand on it, but Chester able to pick up the loose ball. Madrid, Waddington keeps possession. 
Emily Perrier. She had the inside position. Looked like she was hit from behind, but no foul was called. And the Bobcats save it from going out of bounds. Perrier. Inside to Chilton. Chilton pops a jump shot. She had 16 points in that win last week to win the sectional title. Taylor Dernan had 20. Dernan only with two here. Dernan, little fadeaway jump shot, scores! Gives the Cats a two point lead, 11 to 9. Avery Lambert causes the turnover, takes it to the hoop. Dernan's on the weak side, that slips through her hands. I think they got butter on the ball. Something. Okay, 11 to 9. 15 on the shot clock. Ball's down on the floor. We're going to have a jump ball. Possession arrow in favor of Madrid Waddington. 10 seconds shot clock, 12.5 seconds on the game clock for the first half. Tiernan will inbound the ball. Finds Huff. Huff, her pass. Avery Lambert, like, waiting for it. Take your time, Avery. She can't convert. Daniel Burrell puts it up. She don't convert. Burrell is fouled. Story of this game so far is Cats have had a couple breakaways that they haven't converted on, and their foul shooting has not enabled them to pull away a little bit from Madrid Waddington. Burrell, nothing but net there. With 0.1 seconds gives the Cats a three-point lead. Cats are going to go into the at halftime with at least maybe a three-point lead. And the horn sounds. Yes, it's a three-point lead for the Bobcats at a halftime in this regional final here on Hometown Cable. Saturday afternoon, March 5th. It's 12 to 9, Northern Adirondack over Madrid Waddington. Second half action, follow after they get a 10 minute break. Wild Bill Chase home, and Calvin Castide for Hometown Cable. Well, we start off the second half here with the Bobcats in possession. And a possession of a three point lead. They're up 12 to 9. Halftime was a little bit longer than 10 minutes. They allowed them to take a couple, 20 minute nap. It appeared they might be, didn't get enough rest either team. It's only 12 to nine here on a Saturday. Regional final basketball game. Five, total of five scores. Three for the Bobcats and two for Madrid Waddington. Juliana Gardner, Daniel Burrow, and Taylor Dernan each with four points. Leading the Bobcats in that first half. Huff, that's blocked by Chilton. That's her third. And the leading scorers for Madrid Waddington was Olivia Pometer. She had uh, three points. And Hannah Marcellus, the top scorer for, both, for either team, at six. And that's how we get the 12 to 9. Madrid Waddington look at, uh, has three people in a little bit of a foul trouble. That rims out. Comes into the hands of Burl. Burl brings it up to the left side. She's fouled. Madrid probably thought they had a turn over there. They had her cornered. Palmer's back out there. Huff number one. Palmer's number 11. Tiernan number 23. Marcellus number two. 21, and we got number 33, Morgan Burns. So the five starters for both teams come back out here in the second half. Wild Bill Chase, Calvin Castine for Hometown Cable. Regional final game at Plattsburgh State. Chilton, that's blocked. Partially goes out of bounds. Official Mr. Lacey saying that went off the hands of Marcellus, number 21. In the blue and gold. Some old Altona colors. Blue and gold, Madrid Waddington wears. Green and gold are the NAC school colors. That pass from Juliana Gardner. Nothing but two Madrid Waddington people there, and Marcellus comes away with it. Gives it to Tiernan. Tiernan on top here. 
No, score, no scoring taking place yet here in the second half. 12 to 9. Get out, get out of here. Marcellus, jump shot. Juliana Garter overruns it, taps it out of bounds. Rushton Mariah and Osceola Valley will face off in a Class C regional final game in boys varsity action immediately following this game. Calvin's going to hang around and do the game. I can't. Got a family dinner taking place this afternoon. My daughter Amanda, she's up from North Carolina. Some of the chases getting together that she doesn't normally get to see. from Lambert right to Tiernan and a jump ball called. Possession arrow in favor of Madrid. Chester comes in. Marcellus, the leading scorer. Needing a drink of water. She goes to the bench. It's a pometer, three-pointer, and that ties the ball game up, 12 to 12. And that's the opening points here in the over second half. Dernan, stutter step, goes around, or goes into the traffic of four defenders from the Yellow Jackets, draws the foul, she go to the line to shoot two fouls. Bobcats were only two for eight from the foul line in that first half. Nothing but net there for Taylor Dernan. Snapping it. Gives the Cats a one point lead. 5.33 here, third quarter action. Dernan's good for two. Makes him four for uh, 10 now. Turnover possibly. Nope, they're saying possession still remains in the hands of the Yellow Jackets. Burrell and Lambert working hard on the defensive end. Or defensive side of NAC. Pass goes into Chester. Chester gives the huff. Huff down the left side. Lambert's there. Lambert's speed and quickness created all sorts of havoc with Seton Catholic in that championship game of Section 7. Lambert after the turnover. Almost loses control. Finds Dernan. Dernan, move to your left, Taylor. There you go. <laughs> Dernan had the left side open, but she can't convert. Chester. Chilton gets a hand on that. Loose ball. Out of bounds. NAC ball. Hustling was Burns. Um, well, unable to keep it in for Madrid. 13, 14 to 12. Cats with a two point lead as a result of the two foul shots made by Taylor Dernan here in this third quarter. Winner of this contest goes to the final four. Nice drive by Daniel Burrell. Down the left side, lays it up and in. Daniel Burrell. With six points now. The offensive, her and Taylor Dernan tied for the offensive lead. That's just a two. Burl hustling in there. Oh, she hits her head. And she goes to the floor. Four fourteen on the clock. Courtney Drown coming out to attend to Daniel Burl. We'll take a break. Okay, Daniel Burrell is uh, helped off the floor. Emily Perrier is going to come in for the Cats. Daniel, uh, Daniel is being uh, attended to over there by, uh, I believe it's a Plattsburgh State uh, medical staff. Uh, Corey Thompson. Corey Thompson. Part of the Champlain. He's ahead of the Champlain Moore's EMS. Okay. Thank you. 
going to take uh, Daniel over there, make sure that she's uh, she banged her head on the floor. Oh, a sobriety <laughs> test. <laughs> a little sobriety test, making sure she's, you know, the cobwebs aren't there. Any, any chance of concussion, they're going to keep her out of the game. Well, she just ran back towards him, and it looks like her father's over there, too, to make sure she's all right. The Bobcats created a turnover while we were watching that, and they've got a 16 to 12 lead, four point lead. Last points were put in for the Cats was by Burrow on that layup. They go down low to Chilton. Chilton backs in the defender, and then she draws the foul. That's number 21, Marcellus, picking up a foul. I think she, I think she, they're going to give her the okay. Cats are now four for 11 from the foul line. They get five for 12. That's a five point lead. Huff. Call for a travel. She turns it over to the Cats. 3.34 on the clock. Third quarter play here. We're in this regional final at Plattsburgh State. Wild Bill Chase, Calvin Castine for Hometown Cable. The ultimate high school sports network in Clinton County. Cats made it to the final four last year. Actually played in the finals. The New York State Championship for Class C. Dernan deflects that. And then she was running the floor looking to get the ball from one of her teammates. They were unable to get under control, but they do. Chilton pops, scores! And it's a 19-12 game. And the Bobcat crowd kind of starting to wake up themselves. Huff. Huff throws it away. Avery Lambert. Amber, it's the it's the, it's the layup. She pulls it back. Emily Perrier over to Lambert. Lambert's three-point attempt. That's well short. And Huff ends up with the loose ball. Tiernan calling for it. It's going to be a block. I believe that's Chilton second. Yeah, see, I was right. Team first. Next foul by Madrid puts the Bobcats on the line. Be their fifth of the quarter. Marcellus hands out to Tiernan. Madrid Wannington scoring better than or averaging at least 50 points in their last three games. And only have scored 12 here through the first uh, two quarters. Loose ball. Emily Perrier gets called for a foul. Anya Burrell back in the game. Juliana Gardner out. Crowd gives Danielle a nice round of applause. She's recovered from banging her head on the floor. Marcellus with the ball. Two minutes here left in the third quarter. 19 to 12. Cats up by seven. Cats, they scored 50 points in their sectional win over Seton Catholic. They've only got 19 here in almost three complete quarters. Marcellus running baseline or running jump shot. She can't convert. Tiernan pulls down the rebound. Three point attempt. That's off the mark. Chilton working the glass. Dernan. And there's a blocking foul on Holzmer. 1.30 on the clock. Taylor Durian will go to the foul line to shoot foul shots. Hosmer. I've been calling her Holzmer. Team second. I don't know. Team fifth. 
her second. Hosmer. Dernan. Makes it an eight point lead. They were five for 12, now they're seven for 14. They're shooting 50% now from the foul line. Better foul shooting in this quarter. Making five. Three pointer, it's good. No signal from uh, one of the officials over there. The guy on the far side of the court called it. That's three, th three pointers from Madrid Roddington Yellow Jackets. Keeps them close to the game. Lambert was trying to give it to Chilton, was wide open underneath on the right side. Chilton pulls down that ball. Dern it now. Four people from Madrid, and she ends up losing it off in her shin, and out of bounds. It's 21 to 15, 40.7 seconds on the clock. Holzmer, Palmer, Holzmer and Palmer playing a little pitch and catch. Tiernan pulls it back out. Burns now with the ball. Holzmer tried to go inside on the baseline. Marcellus pops a shot. It's off the backboard. Chilton, Paige Chilton pulls up, converts. Heads up play there by Paige Shilton. Kissing it off the glass. Big basket, that's gonna end the quarter. 23 to 15, the Cats up by eight here. Heading into the final quarter of this regional final on Hometown Cable. Okay, in between quarters, Calvin scaring little girls. Handing out the CD tapes of the basketball game. DVDs? I thought you say CDs. DVD. It's a DVD. DVD. It's 23 15. We're in the fourth quarter here. This regional final game and from Blattsburg State with the Bobcats looking to reach the final four for the second year in a row. Hold an eight point lead, 23 to 15. Powell shooting got better in that second of that third quarter. Helped him in. Increase their lead. They were up 12 to 9 at the half. It's 23 to 15. Only allowing six points in that quarter. Paige Shelton from outside. That's short. Goes out of bounds. It was six to two was the score after one complete quarter. Cats were up by four. It was 12 to 9 at the half. Now entering the final quarter. It's 23 to 15. Palmer, Holzmer, Huff. Looks like uh, Marcellus and Burns are out there for the Yellow Jackets. We've got uh, Burl, Perrier, Chilton, Lambert, and Dernan coming out for the Bobcats. Lacey, Doyer, and Quinn return to the floor also. <laughs> the officials. Cats looking to make a new, if they can, hang on here. Second trip again to the final four. First time last year making it that far. Taylor Dernan, Paige Chilton were uh, starters on that team. This year, look at Avery Lambert, and Daniel Burrell, and Emily Perrier right now, and Juliana Gardner have done a lot of the playing for the Cats throughout the year. We're the number one seed in section seven. They're playing the number one seed. And there's a foul call. And Marcellus not liking that foul, but she, uh, there was some contact made there. Cats are seven for 14 from the line during the game here. Make it eight for 15. Nice 
9 for 16. <laughs> Only 2 for 8 in the first half. Now they're 6 for 8 here in the second half. Oh. Seven for eight, excuse me. Take your time now, take your time, come on. Katz with the ball after Waddington turned it over. Emily Perrier swings it over to Avery Lambert. Lambert looking for someone maybe to cut to the basket. Shot clock, travel. The shot clock was winding down. And then there's a travel called. Cats get uh, in that position. You notice they're sort of standing still. Without, without the ball, you got to have some movement. And they're up by 10, 25 to 15. Similar to the first game here in a Class D game between Mariah and Fort Edwards. Fort Edwards prevailing. I don't even know if they scored 30 points. We know uh, Mariah. And maybe, maybe 20, I can't remember the score was. Dernan, hanging onto the ball, and drives the baseline. Nice play there by Taylor Dernan. She's in double digits now. 27-15, Taylor Dernan. Nifty, maneuvering through the yellow jacket defense. In the inside position on Dernan was Palmer. And she puts it off the glass and in. It's a 10-point lead here with a timeout call. 4.46 on the clock. Another that to run back Bobcats. 27, Madrid, Waddington, Yellow Jackets, 17 here on regional final on Hometown Cable. Okay, Calvin pointed out during that timeout, it's the Capital District regional final being played by two North Country teams, Madrid Waddington over there from St. Lawrence County and Northern Adirondack located here in Clinton County being played at Plattsburgh State. Beautiful downtown Plattsburgh. We're in the field house, the unfriendly confines of the field house as far as I'm concerned. In regards to, there shouldn't, you would think there'd be better facilities, more fr friendly to the players. Dernan hustling, she can't get there. Great job though, hustle by Taylor Dernan. 4.17 on the clock. Time, a big factor. Well, as we saw last weekend, you gotta have a place where everybody can sit and there aren't too many places that can hold the crowds we had last weekend. Right, for the boys game, yes. But what they ought to do is put in a new floor here. <laughs> Put in a new floor and drop some curtains behind the backboards. Then it'd be a great place. And to Burl, draws the foul. Burl, she played an outstanding game here for the Cats. Everybody on the Bobcat team, you know, Enabling them to win their third championship of uh, sectional championship anyways. Uh, everybody on this team has contributed one way or another. Uh, Daniel Burrell, she continues to step up her game as she has throughout most of the playoffs and uh, now into the New York State playoffs. She makes it 10 for 17, 10 for 18, the Cats are from the line. There's a long pass. Osmer converts. It's 28 to 19. 340 and counting. Taylor Dernan moved the ball up. Watched by Burns. Reaching in his palmer. She just a little bit of a wave there. Dernan forcing a pass into Chilton, who was surrounded by defenders. She gets tied up. Not a good choice, Bill. No, nope, not a good choice. But the Bobcats remain with possession as. Chilton picking up her teammate there, making sure that at least she fought in there hard, which she did. Hurry, hey, oh. now dishes the uh, back to Dernan. Nice play there. It will give and go. Now a foul called, I believe, on Taylor. First foul on Dernan. 28 to 19. 
317 on the clock in this Capital District Regional Final here on Hometown Cable. Saturday, March 5th. Once again, the winner will go to the Final Four. Bobcats looking to return to the Final Four for second year in a row. Hosmer drives to the hoop. Chilton tips it out. Goes through the legs of Merrill. Perrier going down on the floor, saving it into the hands of Merrill. And Merrill is fouled. Great hustle there by the Bobcats. Ford Edwards prevailing in the earlier game over Mariah. So they advance to the Class D Final Four. Mariah Vikings boys are ranked number one in the state. They're playing out in, or down in Hudson Valley at a five o'clock game, I believe, today. Avery Lambert. She don't get a lot of air under her shots today. Dernan working hard under the glass. Pulls down the rebound. Dernan behind the back. Tries to go by Burns on the baseline, but she cut off at the pass. Ends up dribbling the ball out of bounds. 2.29 on the clock. 28-19 is the score. Hosmer with the ball for the Yellow Jackets. And there's a travel call. That was Marcellus taking a step. We got a timeout called here at 2.17 on the clock. It's a full timeout. Cats by nine. They have a 28-19 lead over the Daily Yellow Jackets here on Hometown Cable. Okay, Northern Ireland around that. Two minutes and 17 seconds away from possibly advancing to their second final four. The second kicking second of the year. Dernan. You can cut off at the pass. 22. Just get it across the line. Go over the top to Lambert. Lambert drives a little bit short. Avery been a little bit short here all day in her offensive uh, shots. That's off the front of the rim. Madrid with the ball quickly. Marcellus finds Hosmer. She has to kick it back out. And there's a travel call before she can. Valuable seconds ticking off the clock now. And the Yellow Jackets down by nine. 28 to 19. Calvin's hoping the boys game's gonna have a lot more points in it. Coming up, Rustin Mariah Panthers against the Osable Valley Patriots. The Class E reared Capital District Regional Final for boys. Patriots getting the buy into that game by with their win over Northern Adirondack in the Section 7 Final. And Rustin Mariah they won, uh, I'm not sure who they beat in their uh, regional semifinal, regional final semifinal. <laughs> that doesn't go. Emily Perrier running the floor. Taylor Dernan finds her. Perrier converts. Taylor Dernan finding the wide open Emily Perrier. And it's 30 to 19, it's an 11 point lead and we've got a minute left in this Capital District Regional Final. Bobcats playing some stellar defense, getting an offensive output. Curry again, off the glass, does it convert. Battle underneath, Marcellus and Burrell tie each other up. I saw a reaction out of Chris Brooks. Did you get that? I got it. Okay. Oh, yeah. He was uh, uh, rock and die baby. I think he was demonstrating a wrestling move. <laughs> Marcellus. Thirty seconds away. The second trip to the final four of the Bobcats. Looks like they're going to go. And they see crowd. Still sitting on the edge of their seat, like, and uh, I think it's pretty. It's over. Till it's over. It's over. It's over. Congratulations, Northern Adirondack. <laughs> Twenty-one point nine seconds on the clock. They got an eleven point lead. Twenty-one point nine 
Well, and now it's a 10 point lead. Marcellus, that one rims out. Chest and hole. Palmer gets tied up. So the Bobcats defense slowing down this last three games. A high powered offense scoring over, averaging over 50. Where are the Yellow Jackets? That's off the glass and in. A left handed shot there from Hoff. And it's a, only a two pointer. 22. So it's 30 22 here. Bobcats up by eight over the Panther, or over the Yellow Jackets. Okay, after that timeout, five Bobcat players coming back with smiles on their face. 14 seconds. 12, Taylor Dernan going down the right, uh, left side. Marcellus fouls her with 9.6 seconds on the clock. Cats up by eight. Taylor thought she was gonna shoot foul shots. It's only the team fourth. We're not shooting foul shots, I don't think. Marcellus has fouled out. And number 41, Brooke Nicole comes in. What is it? Are the refs in Twilight Zone here? Are the refs in the Twilight Zone? Come on. It's only four. It's only four. All right. They get it right now. They've been uh, they've been lulled to, to sleep a little bit themselves without a lot of offense. Nice pass on the inbound play. Taylor Dern and getting open. She doesn't convert, but she'll go to the line. I believe that the Bobcats are going to win. Fans trying to get a, a cheer of I believe we will win going. Is that another player? Palmer fouling out. Taylor Dernan in double digits here. Leading the offense for the Cats. We've got 30. 30 to 22. Taylor Dernan uh, leading in offensively. Uh, doing a nice job on the boards. Doing a nice job on the defensive end. Paige Chilton and Dernan would block shots today. Daniel Burrow. Working hard, Avery Lambert, Juliana Gardner, and Emily Perrier all making contributions. 6.8 seconds on the clock. It's still an eight point lead. And a timeout called out by the Yellow Jackets. And we're 6.8 seconds away from the Bobcats returning to the final four here on Hometown Cable. Okay, third sectional title in a row. Now a second Capital Regional Final in a row. And then a second uh, Final Four trip for Northern Iowa Round Dyke. Up by eight, 30 to 22. Had a six to two lead after one. 12 to nine after two. And then 23 to 15 after three. That's it. The Cats win. The Cats win. The Cats win here. Capital Regional Final. Final score, Northern Adirondack Bobcats 30. Madrid Waddington 24. And they are on their way to a second Final Four. Congratulations to Chris Brooks, Courtney Brown, and the entire Bobcat team. It wasn't the prettiest of ball games offensively, but they got the job done defensively, only allowing 24 points and scoring enough points to pull away and make it and make it to the final four for the second year in a row. Final score, 30 to 24. Wild Bill Chase, Calvin Castine for Hometown Cable, your ultimate high school sports network in Clinton County. And the Bobcats will probably play next, either uh, Friday, Saturday type of thing. Have a game on one of those days. Possibly, or maybe final will be on Sunday. Well, last year they played on a Saturday and the final was on a Sunday. No award ceremony here? Yep. Well, well Bill Chase. I'm going to turn this over to Calvin Castine. It's 3.11 in the afternoon. Now I'm going to go home. Have a good night, everybody. Stay sober, stay healthy, and say your prayers. In that order.
A reverse order. Say your prayers first. Thank you, Bill Chase. All right. I'll let you know. Maybe I might go down. Let me know quick. Well, Capital District Region runner-ups, Madrid Waddington. And Capital District Regional Champions, Altona, Ellenberg, Line Mountain, Cherubusco. And now the regional champion, the Northern Wonderland Bobcats. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching and for you. People who are supporting Hometown Cables. <clears throat> we got a couple of uh, renewed viewer supporters today. We appreciate the uh, folks that come up to us and say, hey, uh, we appreciate your coverage. If you appreciate Hometown Cables coverage, it's maybe time for you to step up and make sure we're able to continue this kind of programming. Thanks for watching.